Hey folks, uh, my name is Evan with Zero Woodworking and I appreciate y'all tuning in to check out this video. This is kind of a unique build where I joined two slabs together, which is pretty common, but both the slabs had a live edge and I didn't want to cut the live edge off. And so this is just kind of showing the journey of, of how I got that to work. Uh, first thing I did is, you know, I've got these two slabs. I kind of rough cut them to size. It's going to be a circular table. So I just used a jigsaw to cut out the basic shape, uh, use my router sled to route things flat, and this belt sander just to take off all those, the router sled marks and get it you know, relatively smooth. So as I'm doing this belt sanding, you can look at the slabs and you can see how those two live edges match up pretty well already. And, you know, traditionally what I've done in the past is I've, you know, done like an epoxy river table that are pretty common. And I wanted to do something different this time around. So I thought instead of like filling it with epoxy, if I could get those two edges to, to match and to meet seamlessly, that that might be a nice look. So the first thing I needed to do was I needed to make a template that was an exact copy of each slab's live edge. So I just tipped the slab, you know, upside down and I slid a, you know, sheet of quarter inch MDF underneath. And I used it to trace out on the MDF, you know, the exact lines of the slab. And after sketching everything out, the next step was to take the MDF over to the bandsaw and use it to cut out the rough shape of these templates. So, you know, I'm feeding it through, I'm, I'm trying to cut relatively close to the line without going too close because I don't want to risk cutting through the line and totally ruining the template. So I just cut it roughly to size, knowing that after I'm done, I can take it to the sander and I can, you know, sand it down exactly to the line I'm looking for. So I took it over from the bandsaw to this Triton oscillating belt sander. And this thing is, is perfect for template work like this. You know, the MDF is already pretty soft. It's only a quarter inch thick. And so running up against this belt sander, you can remove a lot of material pretty quickly. So if anything, you've got to be careful not to run it through too aggressively and take off too much material. But you can just kind of very easily, kind of gently uh, run it up against the, that belt and it'll sand you down and you can very, in a very controlled manner, take off that extra material, bring it right down to your line with less risk of going past the line and ruining it. All right, so what we're left with is we've got our two slabs and these two templates should be perfect matches for their, the two edges, for the two live edges. And now we can kind of use these templates to try and gauge the overlap that we're looking for with the two slabs. So, you know, we can over right there, or just like that, or just in the middle, and what we ended up liking is we did a kind of overlap here in the middle and in the bottom, where they would overlap like that, still kind of have that similar S curve, and it would there would be a, a gap at the top, and we thought that was kind of nice with the two slabs, so essentially this one would kind of overlap, something like that. All right, and so once I found the overlap that I liked, then I, you know, sketched on the template and then I just repeat the process. I cut off the, the piece of the template on the bandsaw that I want off and then I smooth it out, get it flush with the, the belt sander. And then I've, I've got this little DeWalt router I like with a template bit in it. And a template bit's got a bearing and then, you know, a cutting surface. And you run the bearing along the side of the template and the cutting surface will take out material exactly in line with that template so it's just a lot more accurate this way instead of trying to do it by hand where you've got lots of human error your hand wiggles or you sneeze and you know you could mess it up the template bit will cut exactly in line with the template so after I've made a couple passes lowering the router each time then I'll come in with the jigsaw and this is just to roughly cut out the excess all this extra waste on the left that you can see here, I can just cut that out and then I'll come back and I'll clean it up with a flush trim bit. All right, so then we're back to the router for this flush trim bit, which 
works on the same principle of the template bit where it has a cutting surface and a bearing this one just has a larger cutting surface so you can remove more material but same system you you run the bearing along the the template and then the the cutting surface is exactly in line with the bearing and it, it trims all of the the work piece that you got left behind exactly level with that template and you're left with uh, you know a pretty nice flush surface so after you know, using the flush trim bit i used did a little kind of hand work i had a file and some sandpaper just trying to smooth out the edges get them to fit a bit tighter and i think it worked out decently like you know it's pretty good here and decent down here there's a bit of a gap right here that i, I tried to like sand this part out a little bit and sand that down to get it to meet i just just wasn't working so a bit of a gap that's kind of a bummer maybe i can put a bow tie there to cover it but all in all i think it's pretty good so i'm going to try to use some dominoes to just kind of join these together where they meet so i just going to lay out where i want the dominoes to go and so this wouldn't be a youtube video without an appearance from your friendly neighborhood domino so that's what i'm using to join these slabs together but in all seriousness, dowels would work just as well. Biscuits would work just as well. Before I had this, I always use dowels, and they're perfect. Uh, you know, the only real thing is the domino is just pretty quick and easy. So that's the only reason why. But that's just it. I'm just lining up with those lines I drew. I'm plunging in the domino to cut those mortises that the dominoes will then go into. This was kind of a tricky one because normally when you're just gluing up two live edge boards or even live edge slabs, it's pretty easy because it's, you know, square surface against the square surface and the dominoes make a really strong connection. Here, the live edges, they slope away from each other. So there's like a gap in between them. So it was hard. There were, there were a couple of dominoes where it couldn't reach far enough, where it really wasn't bridging that gap between the two slabs. So it was, it was kind of like a unique thing. So I had to reinforce it later with some C channels. But I'll show you all in a second how I did that. Otherwise, it's a pretty standard glue up, you know, dowels, glue, use some calls to hold it flat, and then clamps just to squeeze everything together. And now that the slabs are joined together, I can go ahead and cut out the final shape. So it's a circular table, and I've got this Rockler circle cutting jig, which is awesome. You know, the only downside is you need like a little hole in the workpiece to, to put that indexing pin in that it then rotates around. But it's, it's really easy because you can just flip it over and you can do it on the underside. You could also like take a scrap piece of wood and like, you know, double side tape it and do it that way. But this works fine. Just flip it over, drill a little hole kind of in the dead center where I want it to be. And you put the little index and pin in there and then you just make lots of passes. And you just go deeper and deeper each pass. And you get kind of daisy going round and round. But it's a great way to make a perfect circle. Because the router bit won't reach all the way through to cut all the way through the material, I just go maybe about half the way, and then I'll come back with the jigsaw and cut out the excess waste. Okay, C-channel time. So I think C-channels are a, a great thing to include. I do them on a, on a lot of tables. I thought they were especially necessary this time because the joint between the two slabs wasn't great. Like, as I mentioned before, there wasn't a lot of surface contact between the two slabs because the way the live edges sloped away from each other. So these C channels will help keep it flat and also just hold the two slabs together. So I thought that was pretty important. But these are from Concept 13. I learned about it from Cam at Blacktail Studio. Uh, but these things are great. They, they even make a little jig that helps you cut the, the channels. And um, after you've cut the channels into the wood, then... I come back and I just hog out some of the middle that'll help the C channel to rest flush in t with the surface of the, of the table and just kind of hogging out the waist and after that then just drilling some holes with this Brad point bit got a little collar so I, I go you know just the right amount of depth uh, will kind of deburr the edges of those holes and then just screw in these threaded inserts with some CA glue to help them just seat in there a bit stronger. 
so I always like putting the C channels in because it's just nice and neat and clean and you get them in there they're nice and flush with the surface but they really are a great thing because you know over time it'll help keep the table flat so that the, the two slabs don't kind of curl up on each other and these ones from Concept 13 are nice because they have these pre-cut slots in them so when you put your bolt in there's room for the slabs to expand and contract with the seasons then instead of just like holding it in place with a, a tight hole it's got room for the wood to move and still hold it uh, you know tight with the C channel and so just like before when I was routing the, the live edge slab to the template I'm doing the same thing for this you know the circle edge you know where I used the router bit and that circle cutting jig to cut out a lot of the material and that's really nice and perfect and smooth and and the jigsaw cut out the rough material and now I'm just using a flush trim bit with the same principle where the bearing rides along the you know the smooth cut that the router made and it flushes up all the rough material left behind by the jigsaw and I can just kind of run along there and I'm left with just a really nice perfectly round you know, relatively smooth circle that just a little bit of sanding take off some of the router marks and it's uh, good to go okay so even with the C channels I still wanted to reinforce that joint and a good way to do that is with bow ties and I thought the bow ties were just a nice extra thing because they look cool as well and you get the bonus of a little extra strength in that joint so I've got some leftover maple that I've got from a, a previous project and I'm using this router bow tie template jig thing they have and this thing is awesome I, I use it all all the time and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of cutting bow ties by hand and you just use a jig to do it but so you know use a router bit with this you know uh, bearing and you know follow the template and you cut out the shape of the bow ties in the stock and then you can feed it through the bandsaw and resaw that stock and you cut off just enough to make the bow ties pop out and I always find that kind of satisfying and it's nice because then they they come free of the workpiece that you, you cut out the back that's severing them to the stock and you're left with some really nice bow ties And then once we've got our bow ties, then we just need to make the mortises for them to go into. So use this same jig from Rockler, you know, double side tape it down to the, the slabs, and then just use it to hog, you know, color in the lines and hog out the material. And it makes a, a perfect match where that bow tie you've cut out, because you're using the same template, it fits in there like a puzzle piece. And Maybe it's not as traditional as making bow ties by hand, but this is just like the domino, really quick and efficient. It gives you really good results. Because then here we go. It's uh, glue time. I always put way too much glue. It's just part of my OCD personality. I always use way more than I need, but uh, whatever. So uh, just glue them up and pound them in, and then we're all bow tied. Then after the glue's dried, I will take a block plane and just shave down the bow ties a little bit so they're almost level with the tabletop. Then get my sander and kind of sand everything flush and smooth. And just after that, a, a bunch of sanding and then finishing and we're all done. So that's pretty much it, guys. I've got a couple photos here of the finished product, but I really appreciate your time tuning in and check out this video and have a great day.